Hey guys, I'm back with a really cool mnemonic that I have developed for looking at the triple serum test, what's also known as the quad screen. So this is a test that's used um, for pregnant females in the second trimester to be able to get an um, idea of if their baby would be at a high risk for various chromosomal abnormalities, um, if they're going to be pregnant with more than one child, like in multiple gestation or in conjoined twins or even looking at if they are going to have a really high risk of neural tube defects such as spina bifida and encephaly and whatnot. So this is what I've developed. I haven't come across many sources that really give you a clever way to remember these and the things that I have come across I've noticed were a f there were a few errors or there were things that really weren't applicable to uh, medical students that were going to be taking the step one, step two or whatnot. So here's what I've, I've thought of. So to begin, we know that, so I've named a couple of the main things that this test can check for and give you an early idea of whether you would need to do further testing um, for these things uh, in the baby. For example, the first one would be multiple gestation. Multiple gestation. So in other words, is the mother um, going to have twins or conjoined twins or have those kind of situations. So this one for me is pretty straightforward. So um, before we get into the specific diseases, let me write out what this triple serum test is going to cover. So it's going to cover AFP, which is alpha fetal protein. It's going to cover estriol. So in other words, estrogen, a form of estrogen. And it's going to cover HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. And then one other marker that you'll see sometime is inhibin, but I'm going to leave this one out because it's really not important to being able to answer a lot of these questions, questions into figuring out what uh, the child could be at risk for. So in the tr second trimester, they're going to do a test for these levels, and they have a normal uh, range for what these things should be at. And in the question, it will let you know, you know, whether something is out of the range or they'll give you the range that it should be at that point in the pregnancy. So for the first one, if the child was going to, if, I'm sorry, if the mother was going to be having twins or more than twins or a possibility of conjoined twins or whatever it may be, multiple fertilization, or however you want to put it, that is going to be, when you look at what the changes in these are going to be, it's, remember, we're just ignoring inhibin, but I just kind of put it there for just to remember that sometimes you'll see what's called a quad screen and these are included, but you can usually get to the answer with just these three. So in multiple gestation, the mnemonic that I thought of is if you have a ton, if you're going to be having a ton of kids, twins or more, triplets or whatnot, then in multiple gestation, you can imagine that your family is about to really increase. Your family number is going to increase in size, right? Is going to increase in size. And so just knowing that, that you're going to have all of these children now in a huge family, you can imagine that everything is going to increase because you have all of these kids. So this goes up, this goes up, this goes up. So in multiple gestation, you will see that in, this, in the triple serum test, all of these will be increased in the second trimester. So that's the first one, multiple gestation. So the next one is going to be uh, trisomy 18, and this is also called Edwards syndrome. Now this is how I remember this one. Instead of saying trisomy 18, Pronounce it as trisomy hate teen. Hate teen. So, this, what I think of when I hear of this, is I think of some teenager that has a really bad attitude and is very hateful and is always rude. In other words, they have they have all negative traits. Okay, so when you look at trisomy hate teen, you're going to see everything is decreased. Okay, so that makes it simple for Edwards syndrome. Now for the next one, let's look at Down syndrome. Now this one's pretty high yield and they like to ask this one a lot because the, the chance that your child will have Down syndrome is far higher than say your child having trisomy 18 or Patel syndrome, trisomy 13. So with Down syndrome, the way that I remember it is just pretty much the way that ever, all the books basically say it, is that in Down syndrome, the AFP is down. Okay, but that doesn't stop there. Not only is the AFP down, but you have to remember also that the estriol is down and then the beta HCG, or I'm sorry, the HCG is going to be increased. So in Down syndrome, it's a good start to know that, okay, in Down syndrome, um, the AFP is decreased, but also you need to know that 
following that also the estriol is decreased the HCG is increased and then also if you wanted to go ahead and remember you don't have to but the inhibin uh, inhibin is increased as well in Down syndrome okay so that's one that kind of you may have to remember more or less because I couldn't really think of a good clever way to remember that other than just being able to get to the simple part that the AFP is decreased in Down syndrome okay then the next one is going to be Patel syndrome remember this is trisomy um, this is trisomy 13 so for Patel syndrome I just look at the letter P and whenever I look at the letter P I think of P for like a print or a pattern so because it starts with a P I'm going to relate that P to also think of print or pattern. And when you take a bunch of prints of the same thing, or a pattern of many of the same thing, everything is pretty much exactly the same as the original copy. In a pattern, you just keep doing the same thing over and over. Say I, this was a pattern, I would just keep doing this forever, and that was the pattern that I'm going up and down and up and down. So in Patel syndrome, everything is normal. The pattern in Patel is this is just basically a generic print, same thing going on, everything is normal. Um, in Patel syndrome. Okay, so that is Patel syndrome or trisomy 13. But I want to go ahead and say that for Patel syndrome, it's it's not used as often and it's tr it's not trusted as much as some of these other ones, um, as far as using this triple serum test. Okay, and then the last one is neural tube defects. Neural tube defects. So this is like spina bifida and encephaly and whatnot. A lot of things are in this. So the way I remember um, what's going on in this one is that. Remember that, do you remember what is, what is the source for neural tube defects in most cases? What is the main thing that usually causes neural tube defects? That's if you have a folate deficiency. That's why they want uh, mothers to make sure they're getting enough folate or else the child would be at risk for a, oops, sorry about that, the child would be at risk for a neural tube defect. So folate starts with an F and I just re relate that to the alpha fetal protein. Okay, so in other words, you're going to be trying to push for the mother to get a lot of folate to avoid neural tube defects. So AFP will increase, but everything else is going to stay the same. Okay? And this one, I mean, there's some variation in this right here. Also, there could be some variation, I think, in trisomy 18. But none of these really aren't important, I would say. I would say the most important for all of this and in the mnemonic for answering questions is going to be right here, the three main ones in the triple serum test. The quad screen um, was developed uh, later on. And it's a little bit slightly more accurate, but really the triple serum is still good to, good to use. So for neural tube defects, remember, you need to remember that folate is how you, uh, folate deficiency is how you develop these. So you want the mother to take in a lot of folate, a lot of, so you remember the letter F and that goes for AFP, okay? The letter F is in the fetal protein part of alpha fetal protein. So that's going to be increased, but everything else stays the same, okay? So that's the mnemonic that I've developed for this. And this has helped me a lot to not miss these questions anymore. I kind of came across these questions in various Q banks and was completely lost on how to remember all this, but this has helped me a lot. So I hope it helps you as well. If this helped you, please uh, like, subscribe, and share the video, and I will see you in another video. Bye, guys.